So, but before I start, I just wanted to know how many of you in this room have uh, have been to a mining belt, uh, seen photographs, seen videos, uh, read about mining, especially coal mining in this country. Okay, that's a big group, I think. So, I was thinking I'm going to address a group uh, who've not been actually into you know into this whole issue of coal mining. So. To begin with, uh, I have been asked to talk about uh, two, three things, offloading uh, that has happened uh, on the 11th of Jan. The other thing was uh, how the government is cracking down on NGOs uh, and uh, the third was of course to talk about Singrauli and uh, in Madhya Pradesh and Mahan where we actually work on the ground. So I was just telling Akshay and uh, also Saurabh that uh, yeah, that uh, actually I will talk more about Mahan and Singrauli because the offloading as well as the harassment or uh, the whole crackdown on Greenpeace is just uh, because we have been working in Mahan and uh, it is more important to know why we have been working in Singrauli uh, and understand the politics of that region vis-a-vis uh, -vis development uh, and that I think that is the answer to why the offloading happened and why Greenpeace has been targeted uh, and has been you know pulled into all kinds of controversies uh, in the past one year. So uh, Singrauli is a district in Madhya Pradesh, uh, it is a mining belt and uh, this district basically produces 10% uh, produces of the total uh, coal based energy of the country. So thermal energy, energy mix in the country has all kinds of energy. So you have energy from nuclear, you have energy from re renewables, you have energy from coal. Coal is the biggest, you know, stake in the mix. So almost 60% of the energy in the country is produced from um, coal. And uh, how you obtain coal in India is, is open cast mining. Open cast mining means you actually cut down, you know, huge tracts of forest and then you start digging, you remove the topsoil, you remove the soil beneath it, you actually dig a big crater kind of a thing which is called a mine and uh, you take out coal. So that is how mining happens which means uh, like you actually destroyed everything on top of the soil in order to get the coal. That is how uh, majority of the coal mining in this country happens. So Singrauli is a belt where open cast mining is rampant. It is a district which has 11 mines and 9 thermal power plants. And uh, this is just in one district, you must remember. And the government pr proposes to double the amount, you know, of the capacity in terms of uh, production of coal and also in, uh, in uh, terms of energy production from that region. So right now we have 11 mines and 9 thermal power plants and then there is more other industry there, you know, there is there's cement, there is steel plant and stuff like that. It is uh, in terms of industrial clusters, it is the third most polluted industrial cluster in the country. And this is not something that Greenpeace has said, so you can accept it because this is what uh, the Central Pollution, you know, Index says. Uh, this is something that the Central Pollution Control Board says, uh, which the MOEF also reiterated. So uh, this is the background of Singrauli. Uh, Singrauli historically has been a region which had forests and vast tracts of forests. You know, uh, Riva, which is the neighboring district, uh, was uh, like earlier days when you know during the Raj of the kings and the rulers of that region, the Riva kings used to rule this region and the forest in this region was so thick, you know the Sal forest, they are of course uh, the last remaining Sal forests of Asia, they are well known uh, you know as a species. So this whole patch of forest was used uh, you know by the Riva kings whenever somebody was subject to you know like they committed any offence, they were sent as a Kalapani Saza, they were sent off to the Singrauli forests, you know, because they would never come back. That was the quality of the forest there. And today, if you go to Singrauli, uh, you don't see forest. There's only one third forest of Singrauli that's remaining. The rest has all been mined. Either there are mines, or there are thermal power plants, or there's some industry that has been set up uh, cutting down those forests. And Mahan, uh, where we work, happens to be the last remaining forest of Singrauli. That's just one third of what used to be there in Singrauli. So we have been working in Mahan for around four and a half years um, and uh, we have been working on coal mining in the region. We have been working on coal mining in like 
in the region because uh, if you look at the central Indian belt, all the coal in the central Indian belt lies below the forests. The, the, you look at all the states, whether it's Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh, Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh, uh, Orissa. These are the five states that are there in the central Indian belt. And there's a lot of forest in all these states. And there's a lot of coal also. There's, it's, it's mineral rich. There's iron ore and other bauxite and also. But there's more of coal in the central Indian belt. And if you have to get coal from the central Indian belt, you have to destroy the forest because mining is open caste. So that's one of the reasons we started working in Singroli was because it's, it, it was a picture like ideally because the dream of development that's shown to us, you know, ideally in a, in a place where there are so many industries, it should be the picture of development, right? Like that's for us, the picture of development is more and more industrialization, more and more industries coming in should ideally pave way for development, right? So in that sense, on that indicator, Singroli should be very, very developed because it's got so many industries, mines, thermal power plants, you know, cement factories, steel plants and all of that. But uh, if you come to Singroli, Singroli is nothing but the picture of development, you know. The only thing that you see in Singroli would be huge mine overburdens. It's like, it's like these artificial mountains, like which are 300, 350 feet high. Wherein, which is made out of the mud that is taken out from the mines basically. And there's the, the, the quality of air pollution is really, really bad. There's mercury contamination in the water. So there's been all kinds of reports. You like the fly ash contains all kinds of chemicals and that's all present in Singroli. Uh, we ourselves have worked on a report called Coal Kills, which shows how, uh, you know, incidence of health impacts of coal mining in Singroli has and other parts of India are really, really dangerous and what impacts they have. So we have been working with the communities in Mahan uh, on this whole uh, issue of coal mining because there was this mine that was proposed uh, which was part of the coal gate, which was the famous, I think one of the biggest uh, corruption issues that was ever raised in this country was coal gate, right? So Mahan was also allocated during the same time. Mm, yeah, so yes, so the video is ready. I'd actually like you guys to see it before I go uh, into talking about it because I think it will give you a better perspective. So the video is actually talking about like uh, there are three stories, there are three individuals in this video. They are all people from Mahan. Uh, there are two people who are from Mahan and there's this, there are people who have been displaced already by a mine. So there's this lady who's given her land but her, uh, you know, She's not been like moved from her land. There is this old man who is 82. His name is Jeetlal Baiga. That's the last video you will see. He's been displaced. I had, when I went to Singroli initially, I had gone to his uh, house in the forest and I met him in that house. Unfortunately, I didn't document him in his house because I didn't know he's going to be thrown out of his house so fast. And now you can see him in the rehabilitation colony, you know, because very soon he was displaced by the Reliance Mine. And the first video you will see is about uh, uh, the mahua that's collected in the forest and a uh, story of a family. Uh, this is the one? Uh, yeah. Do you know where your electricity comes from? Your electricity is sponsored by Ramadhar Saket, his wife Radha Kali and their family. They have the misfortune of living in Singroli whose vast coal reserves supply a large part of the fuel for the power sector in India. They will have to give up their land, their home, their livelihoods, and the forest that has supported them and many others for generations, just so that you and I can flip a switch, watch TV, use the AC, or surf the net. Every year, during the week when the mahua trees drop their flowers, Ramadhar and his wife Radha Kali shut up their house in Amelia village and walk with their sons, daughter and daughters-in-law to set up camp in the forest. They carry with them kitchen utensils, mattresses to sleep on and empty sacks in which they will pack the 20 to 25 kilos of mahua they collect every day. Their grandchildren come with them too and this year they have a 6-year-old girl, a 5-year-old boy and a 9-month-old baby playing around them in the forest as they gather the yellow fruits. Five 
पूर्ण पूर्ण सवेरे अपना साझे खाना बनाना खा कर पी कर सूख जाते हैं पूर्ण सवेरे उठते हैं छह बजे पूर्ण गिनते हैं दिन भर के यही काम है डेली के डेली तब भर में हुआ मिली ना मिली तो अपना चले जाएंगे घर दस दिन हो गया दस बारह दिन दस बारह दिन और रहेंगे यहाँ तो पचासों आदमी रहे रात भर यही रहते हैं झरिया में जाते हैं पानी लेने किस बुधेर गाँव में जाते हैं चापा पर पानी लेने महुआ का सब बना के चूड़ऊ का खाना रसपुटका खाना बना के एक मेर एक मेर भूज का खाना एक मेर लट्टा कूट का खाना एक मेर जिन्होरी में लट्टा कूट का पीस देना ओके जिन्होरी मकई में आदमी ना आदमी जिसे काम करेगा मेहराव ना करे आ मैं दूसरा काम है या नहीं या तो कितना करेगा हाँ घर में मेहराव हुआ जब कोई का चाटे हो जाएं कोई का पांच छह लड़का हो जाएं आ ये परिवार ज़्यादा हुआ तो दो या किलो में कहाँ पूरी हाँ सोलह रुपिया सत्रह रुपिया किलो बीस रुपिया किलो चावल वा हाँ चालीस रुपिया प हाँ तो मेहरारू कर लेते हैं नहीं और दूसरा काम रहे तो मेहरारू करी ना पहनी अरे क्या बात है भाई मेहरारू को बिल लेते हैं नहीं कि क्या घसलेरी को बिल लेता हाँ और दूसरा काम कहाँ औरत कहाँ कर पहनी औरत इन लाय काम दे तब ना औरत कर पहनी औरत की कर दी कि चल वहाँ चल जैसे पलांट में भाई देवना करी ये हमारे भाई एम जी एक खाता ली चला जाए कोनो कंपनी ले ली खादान खोल दे तो हमारे काम ना दे तो तकलीफ हुआ ना वा काम दे दी तो हमारे भूला जाए ना दे तो तकलीफ हुआ ना तो कहाँ जाए महुआ भी ना कहाँ है से खाई The next time you flip an electrical switch just now come to six minutes forty six seconds don't you think they deserve better come to yeah 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 just stop it and go into six minutes that's the next story. Six minutes. A little more. A little more. People Six and forty-six. Compensate for uprooting family. Really, how we want to get? Yeah. Yeah. Amravati Namdev of Singrauli sold her substantial land holdings, including the land next to her house, to the coal mining companies, lured by their promise of good compensation. Now she feels that the many fruit trees that grow on the land she sold are cursing her for betraying them. The trees are bare, devoid of fruit, and the company too has failed to deliver on its promises. Can you understand her feelings? Amravati is a single mother of six and the head owner of the house since her husband died seven years ago. She used to be reasonably well off. Her house still bears testament to this. She and her family will have to move soon to make way for the mine, which is only a road away from the house. The ground underneath the compound shakes with a blasting that emanates twice a day from the mine. ये देखिए जमीन का मोजा ये थोड़ा बहुत मिल गया है ना तो देखिए पेड़ पौधा सब मान लीजिए कि हरण समान लिए ना कोई फल नहीं रहे हैं इसलिए कि हम लोगों का बिक्री बिक्रण कर दिए हैं तो हम इस लोग से नहीं फरेंगे नहीं फूलेंगे नहीं ऐसे आम मैं बीच में हम लोग भाई जीते हैं खाते हैं को मार्केट ले जाते हैं बेचने बिक्री करने कटहल है आम है नेबू है भाई इसी में नाज में जीता है कमाने वाले तो कोई है नहीं इसी में कमाता है तो भाई गुस्सा हो गए हैं तभी नहीं फल रहे हैं ना इसमें दिया है ना कि आपको बीस कापित के बार में मिली आप लोगों का विधवा पेंशन मिलेगा जो कहते हैं विधवा पेंशन विधवा हो जाते हैं तो दस हजार महीना बोला है देने के लिए महीना देंगे जो विधवा हो जाएंगे और वो बोले हैं कि बच्चों का पढ़ने के लिए कॉलेज देंगे और आप लोगों की जितना परिवार हैं एक परिवार में एक नौकरी देंगे और बोला है कि बच्चों के लाइन बत्ती जहाँ अगर देंगे पलाड़ देंगे वहाँ पर सुविधा देंगे 
विस्थापित कार्ड बनवाया है तो हम लोगों का ठग करके बनवाया है कि सब चीज आप लोगों का माने सुधा देंगे और दिया नहीं है और कब देगा मर जाएगा आदमी तब देगा एक एकड़ का पांच लाख रुपया देने की तैयार था लेकिन अभी दिया है तीन लाख रुपया अब मैं दो लाख बाकी है अब कहा बताए वो दो दो कमरा बनवाया है डब्बा इतना बड़ा बड़ा देखिए इतना बड़ा घर है तो हम लोगों का गुजर नहीं हो पाया हो, हो गया है और इतना इतना डब्बा भी गुजर हो जाएगा देर इज एट रोड टू हेल इज पेड विद गुड इंटेंशन You can add false promises to that. As you and I go on with our lives, Amravati will have to think hard about how she and her family are going to survive. After all, she's all they have. Jeet Lal Bega is about 85 years old. Four months ago, he was shunted out of his forest house on the mountain to make way for a new coal mine. His belongings were put in a trailer. and taken to a rehabilitation housing complex a grid of soulless little concrete houses marked with numbers that's how they do things in singroli india's energy capital it's called bringing tribal communities into the mainstream as compensation jitla received a lakh and a half half of which he has already spent building a wall around his new compound he also received some rice and vegetables but they didn't last long his main concern is that he is now out of the forest and is too old to be able to walk up to the mountain to reach it he has always gained his livelihood from the forest and once the mine starts and he cannot even reach the forest at the foot of the hills he doesn't know what he will do for income or for food dule seri his wife says she thinks that they will have to beg sir mohe ne chhod ke kyu aaye bhai ab kaha kaha hai jab nahi rehne de ki ha bilas ki hota hai kono khadan ho gaya हटिए यहाँ चल चलिए हम पलाद देंगे आपको खाने पीने की देंगे सब चीज पानी की सुविधा देंगे वहाँ हम दो लोग की खाना खा खाने की देंगे दो महीना तक दे हम पच्चीस पच्चीस किलो पच्चीस किलो का कई दिन चली कुछ हम की साधन नहीं दे साहब तब का कहे हम की ना लाए ना बिजली ना तो हम के कूलर ना पंखा ना हम के कुछ नहीं दे बबरी में जंगल गाय मान कर लगा दिए है तो कहाँ पाई धूप में मरते हैं है? आ जंगल में भाई रही तो वहाँ रूप पेड़ पौधा रहे तो मैं जाकर छही आया गई आ यहाँ कहाँ मिले पत्ता खाली वहाँ करी करी खाई आ यहाँ तो कुछ काम रोजगार हम की जंगल कर ही ना पा रब दूसरा काम अब कैसे दाना खा कैसे का कर पहले हमारे वह हर बड़ा वह केहू का ले जाते रहे तो वह जोत बो कर वह उपजाई तो वह खात रही पहाड़ ऊपर आने कर अधिया बघा वैसे वह ले जात रहे तो वह कोरी निराई बो देते रहे तो होत रहे हम लोग की खाए भर की साल भर की तो वहीं में गुजर हो हम लोग का आप गाय में बीज तान का ले जात रहे पत्ता में खा रही लकड़ी झूरी बेच खोज कर बढ़ने कुची सब बेची बिकने तो लेकर चढ़ी तो पहाड़े खाए हमारे बच्चे का हम यहाँ आ आ गई अब बच्चे तो वहाँ हो गए ना दो सब्जी हमारे के टंगा गए ना यहाँ देखी ना वहाँ देखी अब कहाँ कहाँ रही जमीन का कुछ नहीं दिए बो, बोला कि ये तो जंगल विभाग है रमना इसको कुछ नहीं मिलेगा बस झोपड़ी भर का मिला Today we talk about having a tribal candidate for president, but there is an important step we may have to take before that. Let's first. So uh, those were the three stories. Uh, the first person you saw, Ramadhar Saket, he is from Mahan, uh, the village where we have been fighting the mine, the proposed mine, and uh, in his forest, mining has not happened yet. He still uh, picks mahua and tendu leaves and continues to live in this forest. The second is Mohir, uh, where a Reliance mine has come up. Uh, that village now has been displaced. But when we made this video, uh, Amravati's video, uh, that uh, village was not displaced. The land was taken in by Reliance, but they had not yet been displaced. And Jeet Lal Bega, the third video that you saw, uh, he's an 82-year-old person, and I still remember very well going and meeting him as I was telling you in his forest home. Uh, and he mistook me to be a 
uh, a government official and uh, because he knew that uh, he was soon to be displaced he kept on telling me time and again that uh, you are very powerful people if you displace like i can't stop you from throwing me out of my house but i just have one request put me in some other forest i don't know how to live in a place other than a forest he said and uh, those words always stayed with me because he continuously just told me the only thing i know is jadi booty you know i know only how to pick medicinal plants you know that's that's what i've done my entire life and that's the only job that i know in my life so i don't know what to do in a city how will i go and live in a place where there's no forest so his his old demand was that put me in another forest where there are medicinal plants and you know where my life really doesn't change you know because i don't know how to live in a place other than a forest but of course you know uh, we displaced them and he now lives in that small rehabilitation colony in those yellow houses that you saw and uh, he walks up he tries to walk up the he's got a he's got a cattle and that's how he now runs his livelihood but then again as she was saying there's a lot of difficulty because they don't have place to keep the cattle and it's very hot you saw that patch there's not a single tree so the cattle all are dying and there are multiple issues so they they feel that they'll have to beg and what's interesting is when he was displaced from this village uh, from his house he was given uh, you know 50 quintals of rice uh, he was given uh, onion he was given potatoes and he was given liquor all in lieu of the house in which he stayed so that's the cost you know that that's how, what we are giving them you know in return of the great promise of development so that's the biggest question you know that's being debated today you know uh, the dream of development you know uh, we have two indias there are a bunch of people who believe industrialization and the current form of development where markets are opened up fdi coming into this country is going to is the answer to development and growth in this country and then then you have the realities which are very very stark which you debate you don't like you don't sit in these rooms and debate about it the realities are out there in the villages in the forest for you to see and the realities are very different from what we think you know it is actually so you you've seen for yourself uh, the the mine overburdens and the life of the people there so this 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 whole debate of development is around these two issues basically you know what how do we see development so when we went into mahan and decided to save that uh, last patch of forest uh, uh it was a joint venture of sr and hindalco and uh, for four and a half years we've been fighting that mine because the clearance for the mine was given based on a forged gram sabha document the law lays down certain process for forest land diversion there is the historic forest rights act which says that in order to divert forest land for non forest use you need to get consent of communities which the government incidentally has been trying to dilute and continues very hard to dilute even today i was reading that an article by nitin tethi where you know they are trying to dilute the entire process and remove consent of communities uh, from the entire piece of legislation so there is that law in place but what kind of consent is obtained on the ground is very interesting because a gram sabha was held in amelia village one there are 54 villages depend on these forests so ideally you should hold a gram sabha in each of those villages and take their consent nobody bothered to do that but at least they held a gram sabha in one village uh the gram sabha was attended by 184 people and then there was forgery 1125 signatures were forged onto that document based on this forged gram sabha resolution uh the collector gave an noc based on which the forest clearance was given to this mine and that's precisely the reason why we said we will not allow mining in those forests so there was mahan sangar samiti which is a community led movement uh we as greenpeace play a facilitator role out there you know because there's a lot of gap between you know all the clearance documents all the information is in the english language which people there don't understand so our job is is to is to you know teach them to file rtis get information out translate it to and share it with them the whole job is to just empower them and the fight is theirs ultimately and we stand with them and fight with them so we've been fighting against this mine for more than four and a half years and we've been talk asking some hard questions on development the people of mahan don't want a mine they don't believe the the mine is going to develop them 
they don't want uh, a school from the company so again i want to share like when the when the collector came to the village and asked them uh, and he was talking in the language of the company and he said that when the company comes you know development will come there'll be schools there'll be hospital there'll be a road through your village and all of that so this one person he uh, picked up his hand and he said i understand what you're saying the company will bring development but what will the government do and if the government is, has no role in bringing development then why are you sitting here and trying to talk to us then we'll talk to the company as a government representative why have you come to talk to us to which of course the collector did not have any answer and he got irritated and he left for, you know though he promised to sit the whole day and have a long meeting you know to negotiate you know the give and take on okay on what terms will you give your forest but he was irritated because of this question and he left later on so the the whole issue there is that people in mahan have said we don't want your for kind of development we are happy with the forest we we but even when we say that we are not against development as greenpeace we are not against development as mahan sangar samiti we are not develop against development we are for development but who should bring in the development is a big question we are a welfare state the government is responsible to bring in development the corporates are not responsible to bring in development into this country so there is this larger issue of development that needs to be dealt with and exactly because we were asking these hard questions uh we've been targeted we've been targeted multiple times you know we've been harassed uh and cases filed against us and that is how the whole thing panned out which led to the offloading and which led to greenpeace being targeted very strongly so uh as i as i was telling you earlier the offloading is why why was uh, why why did anybody bother to call us anti nationals the reason they called us anti nationals because they felt we are stopping development in mahan but we have another vision for development you know we we also have a dream for this country just because our dream for this country does not coincide with your dream for this country or your policies for this country does not mean i do not have a right to uh you know uh voice my opinion which is a dissenting opinion in this country if that's the case then the beach current bjp government came into power with only 31% votes on their side the rest of the the rest of india is anti national right because they didn't vote for them they don't believe in their policies they didn't don't believe in the way they will look at development for the next 5 years so the whole issue here you know and then how you how you how you can see that the whole um, issue of development because it's at the heart of the debate development for uh, the government is uh, um, is basically trying to snatch away resources from corporates look at each and every you the government tries to bring in the coal ordinance which talks about penalizing people who are protesting against thermal power plants and coal mines in this country the right to freedom of forming associations and the right to uh, you know peacefully protest is something that the constitution guarantees to me but then the government wants to bring in an ordinance that will curb my fundamental right similarly if you look at the land or the land ordinance that was being brought or if you look at the dilutions in laws that are being proposed so all this ultimately who is all this benefiting who is the beneficiary of each of these changes that are being proposed in law it's all the corporates right if you remove consent of tribal communities from the forest rights act who is it going to benefit if you remove consent from the land acquisition act you reduce the quorum from 80% of people consenting to 50% of people consenting who is it going to benefit so is there any positive change in law that is going to benefit people no every change is going to benefit the corporate it's going to basically facilitate corporate takeover and loot of resources in this country which we believe is not the way forward uh, is not the <coughs> development that we see india is going to uh, you know develop on so that i mean a country like india where majority of people they depend on agriculture on forests and fisheries for their livelihoods you cannot separate you know development from environment and say okay you know environmental destruction has nothing to do with development we can destroy environment and bring in development in this country so you definitely have to look at a model you cannot blindly follow the western model of development and say yes this is how you want to develop so that's a major question that has been brought forth and we've been fighting there's a ground fight so as greenpeace we've been doing advocacy 
we've been lobbying people in terms of the ministries. We've, we've, we have a, we had uh, the Tribal Affairs Minister Kishore Chandra Dev writing a letter, a very strong letter to the Chief Minister of Madhya Pradesh saying there's been forgery and please look at FRA implementation in the region. We've spoken to various political parties. We've approached courts in this country. I am a lawyer, but I am, uh, I don't know whether I should be, you know, proud to say this or ashamed of saying this, that I am a lawyer. I've been working there for four and a half years, but I've not been able to register one FIR on forgery. So that's how law manifests itself on the ground, especially in regions where there is resource conflict, you know, where there is resource and then there is a corporate that wants to take over the resource and then there are communities who are fighting to save those resources. We worked in an area where the local police station was housed within the SR compound. A public utility service is housed within the compound of a corporate registered in UK. We had to campaign for a year and a half to get that police station out of the region because every time you move, you reach the gate and you want to go in to file a complaint, you have to sign on the SR register first. That was the rule. And why should we sign on the SRS, sir? Because company ke under hai police station. So that so 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 I like because we are all law students. I really like because I've studied law for seven years of my life, and I had the like the, the whole dream of oh you know what law is going to help change this country, and you know if you know know law and push it to be implemented well, you know that's how this country is going to you know, prosper and this is how this country is going to change. It totally changed for me when I went into these regions and started working because having studied law, having practiced law briefly and having been an activist for almost uh, eight years before I went into Singarali, I realized that uh, I can't even get one FIR registered. And forget FIRs, Akshay is sitting here. He's got two cases registered on him, one of loot, the other of beating up a policeman. Both of, both of which are false cases, you know. In both cases, he was arrested at midnight at 12. You know, I, I keep wondering what's this whole thing of, you know, like the Cinderella syndrome, like, you know, the clock strikes 12 and the police is at your doorstep. And the way the arrests were. So, I was like, so the whole thing, you know, you keep reading about, you know, illegal detention, AK Gopalan case and your, the rights of people who are, you know, arrested and all of that. And then what you see is that every time arrests happen in Singroli, it happens at midnight, the arrest gets registered the next day, you know. All those hours, where is the person, how could you have kept him in illegal detention, there is no answer. And then there is no warrant, when they came in to arrest him uh, and they asked, uh, where is, uh, you know, warrant, kya hai kyun? why do you want to arrest us, what is the thing. So there were some 8, 9 people and the police was picking and choosing. You come, you come, you come and you come, you know. So that is how arrest happened. You ask them why it's uh, why you were arresting us like this. What is happening? Where are you taking us? The police doesn't have a warrant. They say, but if we tell you some everything here, what we tell you at the station? Agar sari baat yahi bata denge, to thane pe kya batayenge? Is the response of the of the police? So you know you have company officials dictating an FIR, and the police just becoming a clerk right in front of your eyes. <coughs> The whole night the company, you know, dictates and there is an FIR filed in your name. So the thing is, while on one hand we have not been able to get an FIR with evidence, you know, the whole forgery wherein the Gram Sabha resolution was forged, we have death certificates, there are some six to seven people who were dead on the date of the Gram Sabha. We have like some six to seven death certificates with us. And the police says, but where is the evidence of forgery? There were two people who were on jail on that day, who were in jail. There are 30 people who have given written affidavits saying my signature is there but I have not been at the Gram Sava. None of this is evidence to file an FIR, an FIR. Okay, we are not talking about conviction and other stuff. We are just saying the first information report is not filed. Even after we are producing all this evidence in favor of this, F, this uh, whole issue. So, you really understand. So, this whole thing and this is, this is a pattern. This is, this is not happening only in Mahan. Mahan is symbolic of what is happening in the entire mining belt, whether it's POSCO, whether it's Niamgiri, everywhere false cases are being used. Sedition as a law, it's an archaic law that's being used to suppress voices of dissent, suppress opinions just because they happen to be a dissenting opinion in this country. So, 
that's why we find that Abhay Sahu who is fighting in POSCO has 205 cases registered against him, all of which are false. An entire village in Orissa gets like 1500 people in that village including children of 12, 13 years get warrants issued in their name because they are protesting uh, a, a steel plant in the region. So the law as we see it, you will see gross violations of human rights, gross misuse of law by corporates on the ground, all used for the benefits of a bunch of people who want to make profits and money for themselves. So this is a pattern that, that you see with the government and I wouldn't say that you know the UPA government was very much different from what uh, the BJP government is today. I definitely do feel very thoroughly that the BJP government is much more aggressive and blatant and arrogant. But in terms of policies, they were no different. The UPA was the government that gave stage two clearance to the mine. There were so many letters which proved the strong nexus. You know, Shashi Ruya writing to the Jairam Ramesh refusing to give clearance. Shashi Ruya writing to PMO, PMO writing to Jairam Ramesh. Again, you have uh, Jayanti Nadrajan refusing to give clearance. Uh, sh uh, Aditya Birla writing to PMO, Shashi Ruya writing to PMO, PMO giving instructions, give stage to clearance, Jayanti Ratarajan making a note on her file saying I am under pressure and I am giving this clearance under pressure. So this is the pattern in which, but of course UPA only gave stage to clearance to the mind. So you see that how this whole space of, of dissent is being curved, this whole space, how the, the larger debate or the larger narrative of development is being framed in this country. What is the popular narrative of development? What is the popular story of development that runs in this country? It's not the story of uh, Jeet Lal Bega. It's not the story of Ramadhar Saket. It's not the story of Amravati. The popular narrative of development in this country is the story of how, you know, people are stopping corporates from coming in and developing, this development being stopped in this country. So Greenpeace has been targeted and I would say targeted and harassed and intimidated because uh, we have been anti-goal, we have been pro-people, we have been fighting a corporate registered in a foreign company. By the way, whether you are registered in a foreign country or whether you are registered in this country, you really don't because what you see, why is it that you know, this form of development of loot of resources is happening only in the southern countries. Why is it that the Latin American countries face this? Why is it that the South African countries face it? Why is it that Asia, why, are, why is it that these continents are seeing this resource loot? So this is a pattern. There's, there's a pattern of inequality. There's a pattern of corporate takeover of resources, not just in India, but across the globe. And this, And today in a globalized world, you know, you want FDI in this country, you are okay with World Bank money which comes with conditions, you are okay with ADB money that comes with conditions, but you have a problem with an NGO bringing in money. Why so? Why a double standard? When the money from the NGO is coming into the country, it's coming under a law. It's coming under the Foreign Currency Regulation Act, right? And the government is well within its limits to do whatever is available as a remedy under that law. So why are we making so much of you and cry about foreign funding when we don't have an issue with foreign funding when it comes as FDI into this country? We don't have an issue with foreign funding when it comes, comes in as World Bank money into this country. We don't have a problem with foreign funding when it's coming as ADB loans to this country. That money also comes with a condition, right? That money also is coming with a condition. We've seen how World Bank structural policy is clearly laid down, you know. And how over years, you know, whether it's been the Sarva Sarovar project from which World Bank eventually pulled out or over a period, how all this foreign money has had an adverse effect according to me. But when you raise these issues for communities in this, in this country whose rights are being violated, whose human rights, whose environmental rights have been violated, then you become an anti-national. And this whole issue of anti-nationalism, who decides what is national and who decides what is anti-national in this country. That's strange because protecting the interests of a foreign corporation becomes national interest and uh, fighting for the rights of a bunch of people in Singroli becomes anti-national, which is very strange. So who decides what is anti-national in this country? So these are some of the things that I wanted to uh, actually throw open. Uh, we can have a discussion on, on some of these things. If there are more questions, uh, my 
presentation may not have been very structured as in you know touching each of these issues but they are all linked to each other nevertheless and uh, we can definitely have a more open discussion and please feel free to ask questions on uh, anything that you think is is linked to this issue and important to be debated.